I don't think this is some massive, massive crisis. This, this claim goes back over decades and decades. How many of you believe that right now a child is being abused at the hands of a priest? The 30 years that I've been associated uh, on and off with the Diocese of Pittsburgh, there would not, would not be cover-ups. That wasn't, that wasn't our, our process. They wanted to cover up the cover-up. Hello everyone and welcome to this breaking news special report in our continuing series of special reports entitled Episcopal Sodomy. Just moments ago, Boston Cardinal and Papal Confident Cardinal Sean O'Malley issued the following statement, quote, the clock is ticking for all of us in church leadership. Catholics have lost patience with us and civil society has lost confidence in us, closed quote. Again, that statement issued just in the last five minutes. His comments come in the face of Washington, D.C. Cardinal Donald Wuerl remaining defiant. And Wuerl's defiance comes in the face of mounting evidence that he is lying to preserve his legacy. In the latest developments, Church Militant has learned that the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C. has hired prestigious Washington, D.C. law firm Jones Day to represent Cardinal World in response to the Pennsylvania Grand Jury Report. Jones Day represents major American corporations, including Procter & Gamble, Citigroup, General Motors, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan and American Airlines, just to name a few. Reports are that to retain this firm is fifty to $75,000 per month. Church Milton has queried the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C., asking who is paying for this representation and where is the money coming from? As of the time of this report, the Archdiocese has not responded. On August 8th, the Archdiocese launched the website worldrecord.com, coinciding with the same day that the Pennsylvania Grand Jury Report might have first been made public after being delayed more than a month following legal challenges by Pennsylvania clergy named in the report. The site's sole purpose was to defend World's record with regard to child sex abuse. Within hours after the Pennsylvania Grand Jury Report was released on Tuesday in dramatic flare live streamed by Pennsylvania Attorney General Josh Shapiro, the site was pulled down by the Archdiocese of Washington following hundreds of complaints and negative comments. The hiring of the law firm and the creation of the website represent a two-pronged approach by World's strategists to protect his name and legacy. Another tactic, a third tactic, has been to have Donald Wuerl give interviews to select media to try and smooth over very problematic facts contained in the grand jury report. Now, throughout the entire process, Wuerl has maintained that he did not move priests from parish to parish. Did you ever move priests quietly to another? That wasn't, that wasn't our, our process. Church Militant has now unearthed legal records that flatly contradict World's assertion of innocence. In 1988, just months after becoming Pittsburgh's bishop, World moved Father Henry Krobchik from Our Lady of Joy Parish in Pittsburgh to St. Therese of Lisieux Parish in Munhall, following complaints from multiple parents that Krobchik supplied their sons with alcohol and made sexual advances on them. In 2003, 15 years later, at his new parish that Wuerl had moved him to, Krobchik was arrested after 19-year-old Pittsburgh football player Billy Gaines died there, falling 25 feet to his death, climbing through a crawl space in the ceiling after getting drunk from, crocta from cocktails provided by Krobchik. Kobtrick is, Krobchik is connected to a second death, a suicide from one victim who passed out after getting drunk with the priest and woke up to find Krobchik performing oral sex on him. The victim committed suicide in 2006, God rest his soul, just as Wuerl was packing up his bags to become the Cardinal Archbishop of Washington, D.C. 
That makes the official body count from transfers of homosexual predator priests by Donald Wuerl to at least two. In another case that contradicts Wuerl's claim that he never moved priests around, also exposed in the grand jury report, Wuerl has yet to offer any defense in the case of Father George Zirwas, a homosexual predator priest Wuerl paid hush money to in exchange for the priest's silence regarding illegal sexual conduct of numerous other Pittsburgh priests that Zirwas knew all about. In 1996, Wuerl asked Zirwas to sign a statement falsely saying that he knew nothing about the priest's sexual crimes, and then Wuerl gave him a bonus payout as a result, in addition to the monthly stipend he was already receiving from the Pittsburgh diocese, which he spent on a flamboyant gay lifestyle in Cuba involving hookups with male prostitutes until he was murdered by one of them in 2001, who confessed to killing him by shooting animal tranquilizer into the base of his neck, causing cardiac paralysis. After the priest's body was returned to the United States, Wuerl presided at his funeral and praised his priestly service, referring to him as Father Zirwas, after Wuerl himself had stripped him of the title of father, knowing full well the secret payout he had made to Zeros in exchange for his silence, as well as his role in a child porn ring. Wuerl announced confidently at the funeral that Zeros is in heaven. The secular press has now picked up on the story of Wuerl's involvement in the massive, massive cover-ups and is beginning to pile on. Michael Resendez of the Boston Globe Writers, one of those who broke the 2002 story of homosexual clergy child sex abuse in Boston, made the rounds yesterday on various network talk shows where he was asked about how extensive this evil is beyond the borders of Pennsylvania and its larger implications. The story is the same, whether it's Boston or Pennsylvania or Tucson or Los Angeles or, or Ireland, globally. Yeah. Ireland, Australia, Chile, it's the same. The depravity is the same, the criminality is the same, and the cover-up's the same. The story was very much the same, almost exactly the same in Boston, in Tucson, and Los Angeles, and it's the same globally in Ireland, Australia, Chile. This is a systemic problem within the Catholic Church. It's the same story in Boston, in Pennsylvania, in Los Angeles, in Ireland, in Australia, in Chile. The same story. Analysts are speculating now that a series of grand jury investigations across multiple states could be a trigger for the United States Department of Justice to begin exploring whether RICO statutes have been violated. RICO stands for Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, a federal statute designed to bust up organized crime syndicates. Articles are even now appearing accusing the Catholic Church of being a criminal syndicate for child sex abuse and that RICO now needs to be explored. Earlier today, Breitbart published its own article where the question of RICO violations and pursuit by the Department of Justice were raised again. As indicated earlier, sources tell Church Militant that a number of states attorneys general, including New York, are examining if they should begin their own Pennsylvania-style grand jury investigations. In the face of world's defiance, Reports that are extremely well are that extremely wealthy donors are now contacting the Archdiocese of Washington saying all donations are going to cease until Donald Wuerl is removed. Church Militant has confirmed the report from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette that the Attorney General's office is now being inundated with emails and phone calls with hundreds of more reports of sex abuse and most importantly the cover up. Church Milton has confirmed reports that Wuerl sought to block the release of the grand jury report, possibly through a third party, one of those 16 priests that put their name to it, and this attempt to block the grand jury report is what necessitated Shapiro's letter directly to the Pope, where he said, quote, Holy Father, credible reports indicate that at least two leaders of the Catholic Church in Pennsylvania, while not directly 
challenging the release of this report in court. Those are key words, not directly, are behind the efforts to silence the victims and avoid accountability. Closed quote. Immediately following the Tuesday press conference, Shapiro met with the victims whom he had on stage during the conference and away from the cameras and the microphones with multiple witnesses around, he said the following, quote, Whirl was the dirtiest bishop as far as sex abuse cover-up. Cardinal Whirl is one of Pope Francis's most trusted confidants, even ramming through a $25 million grant to a hospital in Rome notorious for shady dealings and financial corruption. The money came from the Papal Foundation, an outfit Whirl is closely associated with, along with former Cardinal Theodore McCarrick, to enlist financial support of Catholic millionaires. The money goes to the Pope, and the Pope gets to do what he wants with it when they go through a grant process. Whirl strong-armed the donors in the case of the hospital grant, leading to an uprising, public uprising in the ranks of the Papal Foundation, causing a number of millionaire members to quit in protest. What donors were not told is that the first director of the Papal Foundation had been credibly accused of sexually molesting a nine-year-old boy. It was Pennsylvania priest Monsignor Thomas Benestad, whom Pennsylvania Attorney General Josh Shapiro was referring to in this segment of his Tuesday press conference and who was named in the grand jury report. Monsignor Thomas Benestad made a nine-year-old give moral sex, then rinsed the boy's mouth out with holy water to purify him. This was the man chosen to be the director of Whirl and McCarrick's Papal Foundation. Benestad's abuse took place just five years prior to his appointment as director. Whirl continues to be a major player in what the Washington Post calls former Cardinal McCarrick's Papal Foundation. In summary, in the face of Whirl's repeated denials, the position, his position continues to deteriorate, with sources close to the situation telling church militantly privately they do not see how he can survive this beyond the next few days. For example, thousands have already signed a petition to have Whirl's name stripped from a Pittsburgh high school that he allowed to be named after himself in 2013. As multiple cases of bishops covering up sex abuse around the world flood into the Vatican, Rome is becoming paralyzed. Pope Francis has publicly declared zero tolerance for any bishop who in any way covered up any sex abuse by predatory clergy. Because of his long-standing relationship with Cardinal World, Pope Francis now finds himself in yet another bind involving clerical sex abuse. As the media spotlight and the rage of Catholic laity intensify, all eyes are on the Vatican to see if Pope Francis will indeed follow through on his promise by stripping Cardinal Donald Whirl of his place in the College of Cardinals, as he had to do with Theodore McCarrick last month. This is truly shaping up as a case of Whirl no longer having any place to hide. Reporting for Church Militant from the Archdiocese of Detroit, this is Michael Voris. God love you.